It takes a minimum of eight years of higher education before a student can call himself or herself a medical doctor. In that time, they learn everything about the human body. But what about things non-human? What can they teach future MDs? And how does the environment affect human health? In Boston, a select group of Harvard medical students is getting answers to those questions, expanding their education by taking a trip to the zoo. You get a heart rate and a respirate on him. These are not the patients Annabelle Anadapa had in mind when she first came to Harvard Medical School. You see that glottis in there, that yep, opening? Right at the base of the mouth. But they are the ones she's caring for in her final weeks before graduation. Injecting between the scale. You were taking blood today from an <laughs> iguana. That can't be the same as taking blood from a baby, let's say. <laughs> Completely different. What has the last month been like for you? It has been an incredible experience. Just the amount of variety that I've encountered with the number of cases that we've seen. Um, it's given me sort of a whole new perspective on the practice of medicine. Anna Dappa is part of a collaborative program between Harvard Medical School and the Franklin Park Zoo called One Health. It allows med students to do a veterinary rotation during their last year of school, leaving the comfort of the classroom for the wild of the zoo. It was such a unique way to be able to, uh, to learn more about, about medicine, to apply what I've learned about human medicine, but in a completely different context. Some of the more satisfying cases that I've gotten to work on um, have been those that are sort of common medical illnesses that we deal with in patients. I have seen just an incredible eagerness and engagement in every one of our students. Yeah. Franklin Park Zoo Vice President of Animal Health and Conservation, so Dr. Satisfying. Eric Bachman, and Harvard Pathology Professor Dr. Rick Mitchell run the program, which started back in 2015. In its simplest terms, One Health focuses on the relationship relationship between people, animals, and the environment. Why do you need to care about all three? All three are interrelated with each other and interdependent on each other. Healthy people and animals depend on a healthy ecosystem. And a healthy ecosystem is a richness of species and uh, maintenance of biodiversity. You know, those healthy ecosystems help us to be healthy as well. While comparative medicine is nothing new, Bageman says a formal program may never have started if not for one former Harvard medical student. The beginning of the One Health rotation here was really rather serendipitous because the, that first student, you know, emailed me pretty much out of the blue. That student, Dr. Gilad Evroni. What was his initial reaction? Without even hesitating, he said yes. So he was very excited about it. I had already been thinking about how to build such a program, so it was perfect timing that he would contact me because Harvard, of course, is the first place I thought of as wanting right. to be involved with. What did you think when I guess you got a call from Eric, hey, why don't you send some Harvard medical students over here? We thought, this is great. This sounded like exactly the sorts of kind of expand, mind expanding experiences that the medical students would really benefit from. Students like Evroni, now an assistant professor of pediatrics and neuroscience at NYU, though he admits he wasn't thinking quite so broadly when he first asked about spending time with the zoo vets. I had no big expectations other than to just explore my curiosity and also have a chance to speak to veterinary doctors and learn from them. Right. What was amazing is that from the very first day, we could talk about complex cases with the same language. And that was just the beginning. Being at the zoo and spending time there, what impact has that had on you as a doctor? I find myself thinking outside the box more often than I would have. The biggest impact was in my relationship to patients, especially as a pediatrician, and how I approach my patient, this gentle approach of gradually gaining trust of your patient. Um, that was something I learned from the veterinarians and from the animals I worked with. As for the newly graduated Dr. Annabelle Anadapa. So your future as a doctor, why are you better served by knowing about more than just the human body? It's really important to view the patient-doctor relationship um, as within a, a larger framework. In medical school, we learn a lot about how people's living conditions, their income, their occupation, all impact their health. One Health is sort of just an additional dimension to that. I think the more that you can maintain that sort of larger framework in your yeah. approach to patient care, um, I think that that serves everyone better. All things Harvard Medical School alone 
may not have been able to teach. In the teaching hospitals at Harvard Medical School, they have every possible test, every possible piece of equipment, every consultant that you could possibly imagine. Here, they don't. The animals can't tell them what's wrong. They actually have to use clinical intuition and the skills at their fingertips to kind of figure out what's going on. And I think that's really valuable. Is One Health creating better doctors? Potentially, I think it really is. This will inform and influence the way they think about global health. When they are working in their own community or they're working around the globe, they will think differently about the health of their patients and put it in the context of the health of the environment. So it's like a micro and a macro level of everything. 13 students have gone through the program. They're set going ahead as well. And this, as far as we could tell, is the only formal program that is affiliated with a zoo that a medical school is doing between Harvard and Boston's Franklin Park Zoo. So interesting. Like, not everything is in a textbook, right? Right. It's just a, relying on that or improving the clinical intuition. Yeah, and I think it was really important to point out, of course you have tests to do things, but what happens when a patient can't describe what's going on? How do you use that these connection. other senses? Yeah, and how do you make that connection? Yeah. And they're learning it because animals can't speak and can't tell them something like that. A lot of benefits to it. Yeah. Thank you, Dana.